good morning. Uh, I hope that you are excited to join with me today to learn more about the Holy Spirit. And because I'm learning as I go as well, digging deeper, being diligent, um, you know, just today I want to start reading something out of Proverbs, Proverbs 3, verse 5. You may well be acquainted with this verse, but I believe it's a good time to read it again. Proverbs 3, verse 5. Lean on, trust in, and be confident in the Lord with all your heart and mind, and do not rely on your own insight or your own understanding. I am reading out of the classic Amplified Bible. Um, I'm going to read it again. This is very, very important. Don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Lean on, trust in, be confident in the Lord with all of your heart and mind and do not rely on your own insight or understanding. Father, we just turn to you today and we welcome the Holy Spirit. This is the year of welcoming the Holy Spirit. And that's what I want for my life today. And Lord, draw the people through the Holy Spirit, draw the people that need to hear this message. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Yesterday I was reading out of Ephesians and um, we ended as led by the Holy Spirit at verse 10 and it was, uh, we prayed, it, it said, um, he planned for the maturity of the times and the climax of the ages to unify all things and head them up and consummate them in Christ. So he obviously is God the Father. I wanted to make that clear today. I believe that's important because once again, in Christian churches, we focus a great deal on Jesus Christ as we should because he opened the door to the Father, the Son of the Father. It's warm in here. The Son of the Father. But the Father is the head of Christ. He's the big kahuna. And I think we need to give him more attention than we do in American churches. I, I'm just saying that's how that's what is resonating in my heart and in my mind. So in this first chapter of Ephesians, Paul is focuses a lot on Jesus Christ because he's the one that uh, was obedient and opened the door. But the Father is where it all came from. The Father is where the door goes to. So we're we'll, going to pick up at verse 11. In him, the Father, we also were made his heritage, his portion. And we obtained, we obtained an inheritance. For we had been foreordained and chosen. We were appointed beforehand, God knew us. In accordance with for his purpose, with his purpose. He works out everything in agreement with the counsel of his own will. He is perfect. He comes up with perfect ideas and he agrees with himself. That's a good thing. We don't want him to agree with anything else than his perfection. Verse 12, so that we who first hoped in Christ who put our confidence in him. We have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. How do we show his glory? Not necessarily by lifting our hands and saying hallelujah, holy, holy, holy. That, that gives a measure of affirmation to his glory, but his glory comes from us living selfish lives violent lives maybe, uh, lustful lives, and then he gets a hold of us 
and he does something beautiful. That's glorious. In him, God the Father, you also who have heard the word of truth, the glad tidings and gospel of your salvation, and you have believed in, adhered to, relied on him, you were stamped with the seal of the long-promised Holy Spirit. The long-promised Holy Spirit. They knew that there was something to come for a long time. This wasn't, uh, they missed it. Uh, many of the people of that day and age missed the Holy Spirit because they were looking for something different. In their mind, in their fleshly mind, they thought they knew what they were looking for. They were leaning on their own understanding, right? We need to go to God every day and say, whew, I don't do so good with my own understanding and wisdom. I need yours. Sometimes things can turn out okay and sometimes not so okay, especially if we become a reactor. A reactor, I don't know my electricity well enough, my power well enough, but a reactor in life is if something happens to you, whatever rises up within you, that is what you act on. You don't step back, consider what just happened, consider where the circumstances might have come from. My son has a 10 second rule, I think it's 10 second rule. He's a manager. And I love this rule. I don't necessarily live by it yet, but it's a good rule. Before you answer anyone, listen to what they say. And if they quit talking, if they give you a break, wait 10 seconds before you reply. It's a good, it's a good practice, right? We have two ears one mouth listen twice as much as you speak right I don't know where I why I got off onto that but it's important I'll just say it's important so we can't lean on to our into or on our own understanding we need to ask God every day for understanding because he gave us we have the gift of the Holy Spirit we are privileged there were many people who didn't have, that's why they had to have prophets and priests in the Old Testament. They didn't have one-on-one -on -one with God anymore. After God was one-on-one -on -one with Adam and Eve, and then over time, sin separated people more, and people separated from God more and more because they weren't, they didn't want to know him. Really, when Moses was leading the Israelites through the wilderness, they told him, oh no, you go talk to him. We, we don't wanna, we don't wanna go talk to him. You do it. They were afraid of him. They were afraid of God. He was intimidating, but he's love. I am telling you, he is love. Jesus was love incarnate in the flesh that you could touch and see and feel. We didn't get to, but he was here for 33 years. In him, in the Father, you also have heard the word of truth. You received the promised Holy Spirit. That spirit, this is verse 14, that spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. He is the pledge and the down payment on our heritage in anticipation of its full redemption and our acquiring complete possession of it to the praise of his glory being filled being filled full redemption this is our goal to receive our full inheritance and i'm gonna it, at the end it says why i need you and why you need me we need each other 
I, oh, for this reason, because I have heard of your faith, if you're watching this, I pray that it's because you have heard, because, and not because you have heard, well, yes, heard of the faith, but because of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, all the chosen people of God. I do not cease to give thanks for those making mention of you in my prayers. I thank God for the ones full of faith. For I pray to the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you, and he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation, which is the opposite of leaning on your own understanding, leaning on your own wisdom. We need something outside of ourselves. We are a product of our environment. So if you had good thoughts put into you and encouragement when you were a child, you will be a more uh, content probably. You will be a more content and happy adult. But if you, if, if thoughts were fed into your mind when you were a child that were opposed to the message of God, you, that, that's dirt, that, that's sin. It needs to be cleaned out. How is it going to be cleaned out? It needs to be replaced with something. We cannot lean on our own understanding. And even the people who've been brought up beautifully, it says in scripture that the best we have to offer God is filthy rags. And until you are, until that is revealed through the Holy Spirit, you won't understand why it's as filthy rags. It's disgusting. We are disgusting and stinky. No matter how hard we try to be good, we cannot do it on our own. We need help. We need the deposit of the Holy Spirit. And he will give us revelation and insight into mysteries and secrets through the deep and intimate knowledge of the Father. If you remember from day one, and I read out of 1 Corinthians, and I was focusing at that time on the four types of tongues, two for public use, at least four, two for public use, two for private use. And in 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2, it says, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to the Father. Don't we want to speak to the Father? I do a little bit scary sometimes and I had to get over uh, my earthly representation of a father was not a pure and good representation of a of the father in heaven a godly father and so really it's only been maybe in the last year I finally said Father, I need to press in to get to know you more. It was all Jesus. Jesus was easy for me to love. Jesus was easy for me to know. Jesus was the representation of my redemption. And he's the one who was on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they don't know what they do. And But he said, he only said what his father told him to say. So he was speaking the heart of the father at that very moment. So anyways, so when you are speaking in that unknown tongue, tongue, you are speaking to the Father, for no one understands or catches the meaning, because in the Holy Spirit you utter secret truths and hidden things not obvious to the understanding. I submit to you that if you are having trouble gaining wisdom, understanding how to proceed 
in a situation or if you think you know good enough because you have experience in whatever it is that you have experience in, I submit to you that you can gain a greater depth of wisdom by praying to the Father in an unknown tongue and he will give you. If you ask for wisdom, he gives it to you freely. So, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, your heart doesn't have eyes. What that means is your heart is, um, is uh, I believe here, your heart is the, the center of your being, your, the knowledge, the fullness of knowledge of God by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. And boy, do we need light. There's a lot of darkness. It's barraging us at all times. And that's why we have to come and daily and get light. You know, you wake up every morning and you turn on the light or every night you turn on the lights. Every morning the sun comes up and gives you light. We need fresh light every day. We need to be flooded with light daily by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light so that you can know and understand the hope to which father has called you and how rich rich is his glorious inheritance for the set apart ones for the saints for those whom he has called because unless he calls you you cannot be called so if you've been called it is a privilege so that you can know and understand right here's this understanding not of our own what is the immeasurable unlimited and surpassing greatness later in, in another place it says is love it does not say that here understand the hope to which is called you to the surpassing greatness of his power of his power in and for us who believe. I submit to you today that if you have trouble believing, that if you approach him daily in your unknown tongue without your own understanding, if, if this world could be perfected through our own understanding, through our thought processes, it would have been perfected by now. And it's not. We need something more than what man can do on their own, what mankind can do on their own. We need an outside source of perfection and power. His power in us and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. His mighty strength. What did that strength do? It set the moon in the sky. It set the sun in the sky. He gave it a place. It set the earth in the right order, in the right place. It set the stars. How many stars? Only he knows. In place. It caused a human being who had lost every drop of their blood to come back to life. Jesus didn't even need blood to get up and walk and eat and talk and think. There was no blood in him. They, they pierced his side and it dropped, it dripped all out. Unless there was some that sunk to his feet. You know, I don't know. But he lost enough that he died and he didn't need it to live. That's power. I have been healed of Graves' disease. That's power. It is documented through doctors. That's power. I've seen other miracles and they are, in a way, if you stop and think about 
all of the animals, trees, flowers, water, gravity, everything. Like sometimes the little tiny healings I've seen happen, like feel really tiny. And I feel, I, I believe that there is a confidence that can rise up within us of faith. that God wants to heal. In heaven, there is no disease. In heaven, there's no tears. In heaven, there's no infirmity. In heaven, there's no missing limbs. That is where God lives, and that's how he wants to live. So I believe that it is possible to stir our faith so that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus said it, I didn't. Let's see if we can finish. <laughs> Let's know and understand the immeasurable, unlimited, surpassing greatness of power as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and, and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places they're sitting there in heaven together, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, every title that can be conferred, not only in this age, in this world, but also in the age and the world which is to come. They are over all. There are people who get voted in, who get born into a position, who enter a position because of military uh, violent power and they think they're in control and they are not. God is long suffering and he watches what we do. He gives everyone a chance. You think of the most defiled person imaginable, God gives them a chance. I want you to think about that. God is love. And we can pray with that mighty power, into that mighty power with great faith. He is far above any title conferred because God is. Remember, I, I when I was a child, I didn't get it. Like when Moses was at the burning bush, and he said, what's your name? And God said, I am. I thought, what, what does that mean, I am? What are you talking about? What else can he say about himself? I didn't have a beginning. I didn't have an end. I've always been, I am. Anything that you need, I am. If you need healing, if you need a bill paid, if you need a healed heart because it's wounded, if you need peace, what do you need? God says, I am. I am the answer. I am. He has put, the Father put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church. Head of the the church headship that is throughout the church there is only one head and it is not the pope i am sorry to say for those of you who struggle with this with if if you struggle with me saying this there is only one head and it is jesus christ and if you follow another head you're not following scripture That he is the head of the church, which is his body. The church, the chosen ones, is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For, get this, for in that body lives the full measure 
of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Do you realize if he removed himself, the, his presence from the earth, the grass would die, the animals would die, the, the uh, fish would die, the air would die, everything. He is life. He is love. If he removed himself, this place would be devastated. He fills everything everywhere with himself. And But I want to go back to this. I really want to make this heard and known. He is the supreme head of the church, which is his body. How many cells are in a body? I thought it was three trillion. Stephen says it's way more. I need every cell in the body of Christ. I need it. I need every cell to be healthy and strong. I need the immune system to be strong in the body of Christ. I need uh, the dead cells to be sloughed off appropriately. I don't want um, kidney stones or gallstones in the body of Christ. I need you healthy. I need you strong. I need you to know and understand the Holy Spirit so that you can be filled with the fullness of the Holy Spirit today. And so we're going to take these last few minutes. Ooh, I never know where it's going to end up. I know how it's going to start but I never know where it's going to end up. And I just want to pray together. Now, if you are offended by praying in the Holy Spirit, we are about to enter into intercessory prayer, praying in tongues for a few minutes. So if you are offended by that or don't understand it enough yet, go ahead and turn off the broadcast. Because I don't want you to be offended. I want you to... I want you to be hungry. I want you to be ready to learn. But I don't want to offend you. And Paul says, as much as is possible, live at peace with your brothers and sisters. So let's just do it. Let's just pray for the body of Christ. Let's pray that the cells will be awakened and that uh, um, the immune system will strengthen and we can and get rid of diseases and anything that has come into the body. If there's cancerous cells that's trying to kill the body, that the body will be able to, that God will perform chemotherapy, that God will perform radiation with his great light, that we will be flooded with his great light of radiation.
Go horan o gosha, doran ame gete. To horan ame gete, tiaran ame go doran ame gete. Go horan ake hete ya, to horan ame kata. Na eke hetea, ane go doran ame gete ya. Ane ke hetea, ane go otosha doran ame gete ya. Na di ke hetea, ane mo goran ame gosha, tahan ake hetea. Go horan ake hetea, tahan ame go doran ame gete ya, ane kataran ame kata. Ane mo goran ame gosha doran ame gete ya. Kurana Makesha Tiara Nako Dorana Makete Naki Etiara Nako Shodorana Makata. This is what God brought to my mind that I believe I was praying. I prayed for radiating light. I called to the world to call in new cells. I prayed uh, to get rid of of waste to get rid of that. It seemed like there was one more thing. Oh, at the end, yes. I told him I apologized. I said, uh, I would just love to just keep on praying in the spirit right now with you. But I believe that for this purpose, that it's time to end the broadcast but I encourage you, this is real. It changes things, it changes your mind. It renews your mind. It renews your heart or your spirit. Continue, I urge you, continue praying throughout the day in the Holy Spirit and maybe even Get a little notebook and document if anything changes, if anything shifts. Let's, let's declare the works of the Lord, right? So anyway, God bless you. Let's see if I can figure this. I am going to say goodbye for today. See you tomorrow.